The Public Regulation Commission is holding public hearings in Santa Fe right now on Public Service Company of New Mexico's plan to close half the San Juan generating station in northern New Mexico. The plan would help bring PM into compliance with the federal haze regulations we've all been fighting about here. Some think the PM plan, however, does not go far enough. It still relies too much on sources like coal and nuclear power to meet energy needs across the state. Now, Eric, you know, there's a lot of issues here. We have some folks in the Navajo Nation saying, look, it's about jobs. We have uh, other folks here, maybe urban-centered, saying this is about that, that classic methane haze that you see on Facebook o over the Four Corners area that we all get crazy about. What's the fundamental tension here? What, why, wh what do you, as you see this, how do we get to cleaner air, and what does P&M need to do? I, I, think, I think the fundamental issue really mm -hmm. is whether or not P&M is going to seize this opportunity to, to, to join the future, to do what Sacramento and Austin and Portland and all these cities uh, mm -hmm. utilities and regions have figured out, you know, th the green economy is here. Mm -hmm. Most of the world has figured that out. We can cling to the past or we can, uh, P&M can, can choose to be a leader and figure out how to make solar and wind and all these other uh, sources that are on the table mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. Or we can hide behind uh, some old jobs. I, I get it. The Navajo Nation, uh, Ben Shelley, you know, there are no jobs out sure. there. And if you have the, if the questioners are, are dangerous, uh, very unsafe, uh, mm -hmm. unhealthy jobs or no jobs, then you're going to do what you have to do for your community. We need all for him and the Navajos and the rest of the state an opportunity. So let's build a solar job, you know, and if P&M said, you know what, we're going to embrace this. This is an opportunity for us to go away from coal, mm -hmm. to go massively, aggressively into solar, into wind, then they could be leading mm -hmm. as opposed to, again, being sort of dragged into the future. Right. It seems to me, Martha, that what Eric's talking about fundamentally is not just leading the charge on something, but opening opportunity for New Mexico businesses to go for that ride as well. Let's say they committed in the next 20 years to solar being some bigger percentage than they've, they've wanted to do now. Doesn't that seem like an opportunity to, to you for, for, for our scientists, for our entrepreneurs, for everybody to get in the game here? Is, is that what's missing here with that? Well, that's one thing that's yeah. missing, but it is an opportunity, but they have to embrace it. And yeah. the environmentalists are saying, of course, they're they're committing to coal for the next 30 years with the plan they have now. Right. To me, Gene, this is a classic example of the three P's, public interest, public health right. versus profits. There you go. Tom, what do you think of that? Because that makes sense to me, what Martha just said. Martha's bringing an A-game. She always I'm does. I love <laughs> this. This is great. You know, when, when you look at, this is a classic issue of environment <clears throat> versus economic development. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't disagree with what I've heard as far as, you know, yeah, we have the opportunity to really embrace solar and renewables, but when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. um, you know, that costs a lot of money. And P&M has already uh, proposed a 10 to 15 percent uh, rate increase mm -hmm. for all residential users. Brought that up. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there are a lot of other things that are taking place here. Yes, they're increasing uh, solar and renewable, but maybe not to the extent that some folks want to. Mm -hmm. um, this is a huge public utility that is going to, you know, serves more than two thirds of New Mexico. Nice. You know, asking for overnight changes. I don't think is realistic. You know, we have uh, we used to have four uh, coal-fired plants up there. Now it's down to two, or at least that's the proposal. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, really looking at what their long-term strategy is, mm -hmm. is one part of the solution. The yeah. other part is is how they're going to communicate that throughout ah. the state, because you know, part of communicating, sharing that vision is something that government, utilities, just don't always do because they figure, well, you know, they got to use us. That's right. You know, that's right. let's, let's, that's right. let's take advantage <laughs> of it. So. Yeah, on Merritt, on that point, that's interesting you said that, Thomas. I was thinking about that this morning. This idea that, you know, a lot of ratepayers, all they hear about is a rate increase, but it's never really explained well what the rate increase is for. And then they wonder why they get so much pushback. Do you know what I mean? Could they be doing a better job, p and about Ab this issue? Absolutely, yeah. because I mean, if you, if you go through it, I mean, uh, rates, uh, making these changes can definitely increase our rates as right. the infrastructure changes are made. Right. Um, and having the conversation with the consumer and then building, there are you know, plans now for low-income people to get subsidies for mm -hmm. their, to heat their houses, because you know, the main thing, we all want Wi-Fi and our computers to work, but in New Mexico, we have people who also need heat and light. That's right. So uh, balancing all of those interests um, um, is, is something that I think PNM is working hard to do, but they need to do a better job of the mm -hmm. outreach and the communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they could take a cue from, you know, the environmental impact um, statement process. Uh, One thing that I think is important, though, to note about the Four Corners plant, 
Arizona Public Service Company uh, is planning to extend their operation until 2045 at that plant. Oh, really? That's that's so. I didn't know that. um, that's interesting. But, but, but I do find I find it interesting when we talk about economic development or jobs or taxes. We always love to compare around the states. But if you look sure. at what the states around us are doing, even Texas, even Austin, they have figured out their their public utilities figured out. Look, we we can join the future or we can cling to the past. And in terms of this being an overnight thing, look, we we were talking about the renew, renewable portfolio standard ten years ago, and and PNM yeah. made a commitment ten years ago. Yeah. They should be at twenty or twenty five percent already. There was a million reasons why they couldn't do it: the ratepayers, the economy, mm -hmm. and so on. So I think so they need me, so, to step up. So, who, but OMB made to step up, which brings in the PRC here. Staying with you, where's the PRC fit here? Because the public, as demonstrated literally last week by those folks outside the roundhouse are, are ready for something else in this message here. Well, you know, we, we are sort of hearkening for the days when, you know, Ben Ray Lujan, Congressman Lujan was up at the PRC yeah. and he took on some of these battles and, and sometimes alone, sometimes with a little help. You know, we need some real leadership. That's one of those entities that nobody knows, like, when you vote from, like, I don't even know what that is, <laughs> right? But th it's times like this when they're so crucial to not just our economy, but our public health and to us leading the future. Right. There, there's, a, there's three people up there who, if they do the right thing, could really set us on a course to lead the next economy and to, to keep the public safer in terms of public health. Or they could do, um, you know, they could take the, 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 the sort of industry way out and take the low road and the least controversial in terms of their, mm -hmm. the people who they see most in front of them, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. That's the utility. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. And Tom, on that point, is, you know, the public could easily, it seems to me, wrestle away the message here from the, from the utility. If the utility does not step out and be much more forthright about a very simple thing, the value proposition, um, we're asking you people for this more money because you're going to get better something, mm -hmm. like some value for something. What do they need to do to, to talk about it in those terms? Well, fascinating. So I'm going to try and encapsulate. There's so much coming out here right now, but what it is, yeah. it really comes down to how you communicate that message over the long term. And the people who, at PNM who have been responsible for communicating that message long term um, have since left. And so you have a new, very capable team yes. of communicators, but they're playing with somebody else's playbook. So, you know, right now they have to find a way, how do we adapt, but how do we use the same kind of approaches in years past? So I think they have sure. a great opportunity to reshape it. Yeah. But in order to do that, you just have to be relevant in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I think the protesters are being more relevant right now, right. as a lot of people expect they would be sure. at this phase of sure. the hearings, mm -hmm. uh, than PNM is. And PNM has been very effective in getting its message out, but right now it's the protesters' turn. That's right. That's right. And Martha, part of that is the protest, on the protesters' side, there's been a lot of interesting things lately. If you, I think about our colleague Laura Paskus in her writing. There's been a lot more awareness about environmental issues in our state through the media and other places over the last three or four years. My sense is that side of the equation is much more empowered now, which is why you saw the turnout that you saw uh, last week. So the impact on the legislature and the PRC and everybody else uh, with citizen zest here, what, what's your thought well, on that? Well, what we know uh -huh. is what brings change, even now in the age of social media, uh -huh. What brings change the most is street action. Right. That's right. And I do believe that protest begets protest. I think Ferguson plays into this in the sense you see people in the street, they're trying to make change. Well, That's maybe right. we could do that. That's right. And so, yes, they've grabbed the media. They're the ones out there with the signs. Sure. They don't have the PR people, probably. Right, right. Uh, but they are making an impact in terms of their visuals, in terms of their very succinct message, mm -hmm. and that is the essence of protest. Mm -hmm. Then you get people sitting back on that couch thinking, well, yeah, I'll go along with this. That's right. It's part of, it's part of the, bar the bargain, isn't it? The citizen yes, it versus is. the governing party. You've got to get out there and let them know where we all stand. So, up next, our line panelists right here around the clock.